My task today is to talk about the Committee on Decorum and Investigation of Gender-Based Sexual Harassment under our uh, new law, RA11313, which is the Safe Spaces Act, or the Act Defining uh, Gender-Based Sexual Harassment in uh, Public Spaces, Workplaces, Online, and educational and training uh, institutions. As you have learned from the previous speaker, the new law on anti-sexual harassment in this country expands the coverage to cover the public spaces. And you have learned about uh, street sexual harassment, um, online sexual harassment, and this time, we want to know how uh, work-related and education-related sexual harassment are dealt with by the law. The law was passed sometime uh, mid-2019 and immediately after its implementing rules and regulations were also created by no less than uh, 12 uh, heads of national agencies, including the Commission on Higher Education Chairperson, the Commission on Human Rights, the Secretary of the Department of Education, and uh, uh, the other leaders, including the Chairperson and the Commission on Women. So, uh, it's not. It's now time for us to learn about what uh, changes were made on the nature of the committee on the quorum and investigation under the new law. And my task is to, to, to talk about these related topics. What were, what are the duties of the employers, as well as the heads of persons in or and persons in authority in. Uh, school settings. What about the composition of the CODI, the procedure be, to be followed in dealing or addressing sexual harassment cases? The rights of victims, the liabilities and penalties. And um, it's important as well for us to know the new provision on amendments or repeal of existing CODI rules. And lastly, the duty of the national government agencies in the implementation of the provisions. Now the CODI as provided by the Safe Spaces Act or the Republic Act 11313 is a mechanism created to address gender-based sexual harassment in formal institutions or organizations registered under the law. So what is the CODI? The law provides that uh, this is supposed to work as an independent mechanism of these uh, public and private uh, organizations. This is created by the employer or the person in authority to function primarily to investigate and address complaints of gender-based sexual harassment. You can find that in section 19 and sections 21 to 22, how it is created. And uh, for us to go through a reading of the law so that we will not miss anything, section 19 says that employers and other persons in authority in workplaces shall have the duty to prevent, deter, and punish the performance of acts of gender-based sexual harassment in the workplace and in relation to the CODI, uh, they also have the duty to create an independent mechanism uh, or the CODI to investigate the complaints. In section 22, we find a provision to govern the CODI in uh, school-related context education related context um, holds that uh, 
the CODI is to investigate complaints of gender-based sexual harassment but also have the following characteristics that it should represent all the sectors that are involved or may be affected or may have um, stake in the case. Designate a woman as a head and no less than half of its members should be women. And all these other uh, provisions which we will uh, touch on later on in the presentation. In section 27, we also find the provision and the duties of school heads and the heads of training institution. And it also emphasizes the duty to create the CODI in such cases where uh, there is none. So what are the rules governing the CODI? The rules governing the CODI shall be stipulated a code of conduct and uh, the existing CODI rules. No? The, code, the code of conduct as provided under 113.3 should define the prohibited acts, the persons liable, and the pro procedures and penalties to govern the sexual harassment. Um, and all the provisions of the code of conduct should be in consonance with the uh, intent of RA 11313. While uh, existing code rules which have been um, adopted under RA 7877 uh, have to be amended in compliance with R uh, RA 11313 or the new law. In section 32, we find a specific provision as to the development of the code of conduct. And it says here that um, employers and heads of educational and training institutions should develop the code, code of conduct. And this is a policy that should define gender-based sexual harassment, its coverage, forms, classifications, and penalties. And it may also include the prohibition against sexual harassment by uh, employees, employers, uh, employees to customers, clients in, of the establishments or agency, employers or employees to student interns, uh, student interns to employers, employees or workers in a company, office, or agency that is acting as a partner on, uh, on the job training institution. And specify the provisions uh, on the procedures in the filing of cases, investigation, and resolution and appeal thereof that will be ba the basis of the function of the code. So the code of conduct should be passed by the institution or organization to govern the operation of the Committee on the Quorum and investigation. But, but uh, before I proceed, take note of number three, where we find that the uh, previous requirement for moral ascendancy is now amended, that it has been, also, it, uh, it has been uh, repealed effectively by this provision because now students may be penalized for harassing their teachers or in this case the employers if, if a student is an on uh, OJT or on the job training and he commits a sexual harassment act against employees in the company or even the boss in the company that uh, is a partner OJT institution, he can be penalized under the law. The, and further, in, the, in section 32, uh, it says that the, the code of conduct should specify the functions, responsibilities, and composition, and qualification of the code including the penalties to be imposed on the members of the CODI in cases of non-performance or inadequate performance of functions. 
it may also include a probation of support, especially for victims of gender-based sexual harassment. So take note here that the institution has the, the power to uh, de define the specific uh, provisions on the functions and responsibilities of the members of the code. So it's important that the code of conduct be uh, developed by the institution. If there is already one, then it should be uh, examined and amended if necessary to conform to the provisions of the uh, new law on uh, the Safe Spaces Act. So now, we, let us proceed to the functions of the coding. So what are the functions of the coding? The functions are to supervise the provision of uh, assistance to the employee, false victims uh, to the sexual harassment while within the workplace. That's one function. But who composed the coding in the school setting? At least one representative representative each from the school administration, trainers, instructors, professors or coaches, and students or trainees, students and parents as the case may be, and other groups as may be applicable. But take note that the law also provides that there should be equal representation of persons of diverse sexual orientation gender identity and expression as far as practicable and that there should be designated perma permanent alternates of the representatives in the CODI so as not to delay the procedure. Designates with authority should render and with the authority to render the uh, decision should be chosen to ensure the continuity of the deliberations of the CODI. So we find that in section 33, uh, employers and heads of educational training institutions should constitute the CODI uh, to, go <clears throat> to include these uh, representatives in order that the, the views of the various uh, groups should be taken into consideration in the in the deliberation of the case. In the work setting, the composition of the body is as follows. One, there should be one from management, one from the employees, from the supervisory rank, the rank and file employees, and the unions or employees association. And that the body in the work setting will act as an independent internal grievance mechanism and its composition and uh, processes shall be governed by the new law. Section 33 further provides that uh, the head of the CODI should be a woman and not less than half of its members shall be women. It should uh, be impartial and the uh, members should not be com uh, connected or related to the alleged perpetrator within the fourth degree of consanguinity. Dapat hindi ka mag -ana. And must have no prior record of involvement as respondent or defendant or accused in a sexual harassment case. So in cases where there are considerations such as relationship or a prior involvement in a case, the member of the body should inhibit himself. Inhibition of the members in case of uh, these uh, factors must be uh, incumbent upon the members. Complainants or respondents may request a member of the CODI to inhibit or the CODI member may, may on his or her, or her own initiative cause the inhibition based on conflict of interest, manifest partiality, and other reasonable ground. The inhibition of the member 
must be immediate and he should be immediately he or she should be immediately replaced so as not to cause delay in the uh, addressing the case how should the CODI deliberation be conducted uh, you should remember eight things pertaining to this concern of how the CODI should uh, address a sexual harassment case. And these are due process, protection of the complainant, of course, um, the, the frame, time frame of processing the complaint, guarantee of confidentiality, proper notification, guarantee of the right to information, guarantee of the right to appeal, gender sensitive handling of cases and confidentiality so let us uh, go through each one of the uh, requirements of the law of course due process you already learned that uh, this is this comes into dimensions one is substantive and the other one is procedural so both are required in the deliberation of the code. Uh, substantive has something to do with what is contained or what is prohibited in the law, what the law actually provides. And then the procedural due process has something to do with the uh, rules, the procedures in the conduct of the investigation. Investigation and decision on written complaints must be done within 10 working days or less upon the receipt. And this does not include uh, the period of appeal given to all parties in accordance with existing laws. Protection of the complainant from retaliation without causing him or he, her any disadvantage, diminution of benefits or displacement and without compromising her or displacement and without compromising his or her security of tenure. Guarantee confidentiality to the greatest extent possible. So the respondent is given the opportunity also to properly be notified of and respond to the charges. And the parties are given information on the hearings and its outcomes. The, the appeal process uh, shall be ensured to, the, to both the respondent and the complainant. The CODI shall ensure protection of the complainant from retaliation during the period of appeal. Guarantee uh, gender sensitive handling of cases and confidentiality of the identity of the parties and proceedings to the greatest extent possible. What are the duties of employers? Uh, under section 19 and school heads under section 22 in relation to the CODI. So uh, they both have parallel duties. So employers and other school uh, persons of authority in both the workplace and, uh, and school setting as well as training institutions shall have the duty to prevent deter or punish the performance of gender-based sexual harassment and they have the they have the uh, duty to develop and di disseminate information on the code of conduct or the workplace policy which shall uh, expressly reiterate the prohibition of the gender-based sexual harassment acts. Describe the procedure of the internal mechanism. So this is the, the characteristic of the code of conduct or the policy governing sexual harassment. And also these rules, rules should set administrative penalty. What are the duties of education 
and training institution. In sections 27 and 21, one is to assign a person, assign an office or a person that must be readily accessible to receive complaints on gender-based sexual harassment. And this must ensure that the received complaint are processed in a manner that is most efficient and convenient to the complainant. Number two, to ensure confidentiality in the process of accepting the complaint. Number three, uh, that school authorities who have knowledge or reasonably know about the possible or impending act of gender-based sexual harassment or sexual violence in the school should promptly investigate to determine the veracity of such information or knowledge and the circumstances under which the acts of gender-based sexual harassment or sexual violence were committed and to take appropriate steps to resolve the situation even if the individual does not want to file a complaint or does not request that the school take any action. So this is different from the old law because in the RA 7877, for an action to proceed, there must be a verified complaint from the written complaint from the complainant. Now, under the new law, you can see that uh, the institution is empowered to address gender-based sexual harassment immediately. And it, its power is so uh, strong and its power is, is so strong and the duty is expressed in the law. No? Under section 21, it says here, it is the duty of the institution to take immediate action to eliminate the, same, the acts and prevent their recurrence and address their effects. And it has also the power to strip the diploma from the perpetrator or issue an expulsion order upon the conviction of the respondent. What are the rights of the victim with respect to the jurisdiction of the code? The victim has the right to seek redress in appropriate courts or uh, prior to or during the pendency of the code investigation. So uh, according to section 30, Nothing shall preclude or prevent the victim of education or training related gender-based sexual harassment from institution, instituting a separate and independent action for damages and other affirmative relief. Now, what is the liability of school heads and heads of training institutions in section 28? They can be liable for committing acts of gender-based sexual harassment. But a person who has authority or influence or moral ascendancy over another in an education or training institution may also be held responsible for number one, non-implementation of their duties under section 22. What is section 22? And that is to uh, cause the development of the code of conduct and the, and the creation of the code. And the penalty is a fine of not less than 5,000 but not more than 10,000 pesos upon the conviction of the person in authority. Another one is uh, for failure to act on reported acts of gender-based sexual harassment committed in the institution. The penalty of a fine at less than 5,000 pesos nor more than 10,000 pesos for convicted officials. How about uh, the policy on existing rules deciding on the liability of the student violator. Um, well, there, there 
there is no rule up regarding this under the anti-sexual harassment law because of the requirement for moral ascendancy. The student is always a victim under the old law. But under the new law, uh, the provisions are um, that one, if the student perpetrator is a minor and is found to have committed the acts of gender-based sexual har harassment, he shall be held liable for administrative sanctions by the school as stated in the school handbook. Okay, at least at this point, you've learned about the governments or at least the law's seriousness in addressing the problem of gender-based uh, sexual harassment. And in summary, you've learned the following. One, that RA11313 expanded the coverage of the old law, RA7877, and it provides stronger penalties or mechanisms to control the commission of sexual harassment in all public spaces. Secondly, that the law mandates for the CODI to be created as an independent uh, internal mechanism ready and available to address all forms of work-related or education and training-related sexual harassment. Thirdly, that it is the duty of employers, school heads, and persons in authority in education and training-related institutions to create the CODI or cause the development of the Code of Ethics upon which um, the operation of the CODI shall be based. Next, that the CODI composition comes from equal representation of all sexes and sectors in the organization and that the law mandates for at least one coming from each sector. Next, the creation and the procedures governing the CODI shall be contained in the Code of Ethics and it shall cover all organizations within the ambit of the government's monitoring and control. Number six, that the victim has the right to seek redress in the appropriate courts of justice uh, during or even before the pendency of the uh, code investigation of the case. Next, that the employer or the person in authority may be held liable for three things. One, for committing gender-based sexual harassment. Second, that uh, in case of failure for uh, the create in the creation of the CODI and uh, for the development of the Code of Ethics in accordance with the mandates of the law. Thirdly, and lastly, for not addressing uh, reported as, as well as those that are reported and within the ambit of the of his reasonable knowledge of cases of uh, gender-based sexual harassment. Next, the requirement of moral ascendancy uh, of the respondent in the case under RA 7877 has been effectively repealed. The present law now penalizes minors for uh, violating the act. So minors are now uh, subject to administrative penalties uh, under the existing uh, policies of the school, if it is a school. And um, students who may not have moral ascendancy over the victim of uh, legal age may also be penalized under the law. Next, the institution is duty-bound to immediately address all forms of gender-based sexual harassment. Uh, so even if the uh, complainant does not wish to file a case or that does not wish for the institution to take action on the case, uh, the person in authority and the employer is duty-bound to act to end all forms of sexual harassment to prevent further the commission of the, the violation. 
Next, existing CODI rules should be amended or revised to conform to the provision of RA11313. And lastly, you have learned also that uh, national government agencies have the duty to conduct routine inspection to ensure the society's compliance to the law. You know, organizations have a role in controlling the commission of sexual harassment and changing the culture of lack of respect for women and other marginalized uh, genders in all spaces. All have the duty to serve the law. So thank you for listening, learning, and responding to this presentation. Good day.